Oh. Okay. Mga kaibigan, so after a very, very long time is balik nga tayo sa mga smartphone reviews. Ewan ko, naman nakaraang buwan kasi parang more on mga sale ng smartphones yung nangyari imbes na puro release. Ewan ko, parang naging underwhelming nga tayo yung Techtober. But yeah, ito nga po tayo ngayon with the Poco C65, ang bagong release ng Poco na budget smartphone for 5,499 ang MSRP with the base version with 6 gigs of memory and 128 gigs of storage. The main reason kung ba't ito yung binili ko for a smartphone review kasi I can't remember the last time na nag-review ako ng smartphone for less than 10k. Nalagay ko lang siguro yung date kung kailan ako huling nag-review ng smartphone for less than 10k. And yung specs na nag-stood out sa akin dito is yung MediaTek Helio G85 Plus A 90Hz display plus USB-C with 18W fast charging. Ngayon alam ko nandiyan si Infinix, nandiyan si Tecno, nandiyan si Itel, Itel, di ko lang yung pronunciation doon sa brand na yun. Pero kasi yung smartphones nila that cost the same as this has Unisoc, chipsets. Which yes, alam ko, more on budget chipset sila, kaya ganun. Pero ayaw ako, para mas gusto ko na rin G85 na nandito, kahit na bad yung experience ko with a G85 back in 2021 with the Redmi Note 9. But yeah, anything I say about this phone, hindi justified yun. Considering yung price nito, again, 5,499 para sa 6GB, 128GB variant, and sobrang unnecessary na 8GB variant nito for a chipset like the G85. Ako siguro for flex na lang, 8 gigs of memory siguro. Pero yun nga, 6499 naman para sa 8 gig, 256 gig variant nito. And actually, itong 6 gig variant na nabili ko is way less than the MSRP. So, 4K ko alam binili ito. Maraming salamat sa mga vouchers. So yan, Poco C65. So yun nga yung blue color yung binili ko. And ayan yung ibang kasama sa box. Ngayon, hindi ko na-expect na iraran nito ang Genshin or siguro barely, not entirely sure, nakakalaman kasi yung Redmi Note 9 dati is hindi talaga nararan ang Genshin. Ngayon, yun, salam po ang unboxing video pa lang to pero sa presyo niya na 5499 para sa G85 90Hz display, 18W fast charging is sulit na sulit na yun. And unfortunately, 10W charger lang yung kasama nito. And Type-A to Type-C na cable. Dito naman, wala na doon. Kala ko may lalagay sila doon, pero wala pala. Nandito naman ang SIM ejector. And walang case, unfortunately. Nandito pa lang actually sa safety information paper is yan, nakalingin na dyan. 2 nano SIMs and 1 micro SD card. So, very nice. So, yan nga siya. Yeah, I get that. Para sa design, yung part na to, yung glossy finish sa what? Would be usually may nakalagay na parang module dito for the camera system. Pero I'm just not a fan of that glossy finish. Pero at least dito, non-reflective and textured finish dito. Of course, yung Poco branding dito, yung camera system natin. Actually, yung nakalagay sa spec sheet neto is dual camera setup lang to. So, 150 megapixel sensor and 1-2 megapixel macro. Pero mukhang may extra 2 megapixel tayo for depth information. Hindi uh, na kalagay nga again spec sheet pero yun lang naman yung hula ko. So yun nga, 15 megapixel AI camera, LED flash, and mukhang parang wala lang yung uh, part na to ko naman to. So sa right side, uh, power button slash fingerprint scanner, uh, volume rockers which are, well, they're not. Actually, volume rockers are a bit clicky. Hindi naman necessarily mushy yung power button pero... Uh, two flash siya para sa akin sa frame ng phone. And sa left side, ang SIM card tray. At the top, we have the 3.5 jack, which I would have preferred to be at the bottom, but hey, it is a jack. And sa bottom naman, we have the main microphone, USB Type-C charging port, and single bottom firing speaker. So, no dual stereo speakers dito. So, ayan, Poco C65, G85, 15 megapixel AI triple camera. So, ito nga, nakalagay nga dito, AI triple camera, kahit na Honestly, the only sensor here is that 15 megapixel sensor. Um, Ryan 6.74 inch, 90 hertz, supports 18 watt fast charging, and the massive 5,000 milliampar battery. And mukhang ito lang atay nakatakip sa screen. Wala tang parang pre-installed na plastic screen protector. Ngayon nga, earpiece speaker grill and teardrop notch nga yan kung di nga nakikita. And wow, nakikita ko pala ngayon ang kapal ng bottom chin niya. Pero... <laughs> Hey, it's budget phone. I don't really want to complain. I'm fairly loud to my speakers, yeah. Speaker. And what I can tell you now is there is nothing sexy about the bezels. Kaya kung side bezels, yeah, it's not sexy at all. Ah, talagang ano? Kaya sa S23 ko ngayon, 
I wish na physical na lang na side mounted fingerprint scanner yung meron siya kasi this is more useful not just faster and uh, a lot of the times more accurate makapaglagay ka pa na additional functions and shit so yun lang naman so si setup ko lang to and I'll come back to you guys in a bit okay medyo nagbabalik na tayo mga kaibigan and one major thing agad one major downside sa phone na to uh, so far at least napansin ko is since EMMC storage to na sobrang bagal yung pag-update, pag-download regardless kung gano'ng kabilis yung internet speed nyo if hindi naman makakasabay yung uh, bilis na storage ng phone nyo is wala din so siguro mga 20 minutes ko lang in-update yung mga to not so sure, basta ang tagal mag-update ng mga apps dito and kahit pa paano naman the phone feels snappy uh, there are stutters of course obviously considering na uh, budget phone pa din to with a budget chipset. And one thing na tinurn off ko kagad pag setup ko dito is yung lintik na memory extension. So yun, off na siya ngayon. Pero just wondering, how much more pa kaya magiging price nito if ginawa ng Poco is UFS? Kahit UFS 2 yung storage nito. But yeah, yun nga. So currently nakasetup na nga to sa 90Hz. Yan, very nice naman. And mukhang hindi ko mapapakita yung Genshin test ngayon. Not sure kung mararan na ito, pero malalaman nyo sa full review ko nito after one week. And pagdating naman sa display nito, it's actually not bad. It's quite decent for an IPS LCD, 720p nga. Uh, medyo washed out lang yung colors niya, and that's pretty much it. And so far, pretty respectable naman yung brightness niya, yung max brightness. And of course, pagdating sa build niya, so plastic back, plastic frame, and uh, glass front. Corning Gorilla Glass lang ang nakalagay sa spec sheet nito. Not sure kung parang anong version ng Corning Gorilla Glass to, but hey, ito is Corning Gorilla Glass. And uh, ang Bentes, yes. Alam akong pake kung budget phone to, may Bentes. Okay. Was expecting it to be worse pero actually not bad actually pretty good for the price there's barely any flex if i try to bend it so pretty good and the phone weighs about 199 grams and as nakikita nyo naman is sobrang fingerprint magnet ng part na ng phone which assume ko if hindi ka mag-iingat is easily magi scratch yung uh, glossy part na to. At least hindi yung hold back yung glossy finish, so I'm happy with that. And yung speed naman ng side mounted fingerprint scanner is just okay. It's not the fastest, definitely, pero it works and it's accurate for the most part. Na maganda dito, dito sa additional settings, yes, inad nila yung function para ma double tap mo lang yung fingerprint scanner. So for example, yan, you can just double tap, hindi presa, double tap lang. And It'll take a screenshot, so very nice. Tapos siguro quick camera test tayo. So, yan. Yan, quick selfie na din siguro. Of course, of course yung mga filters and shit nito. And sa so, nakikita ko so far sa display ng phone, yung mga pictures are actually quite okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Tapos pagdating naman sa video side nito, up to 1080p lang at 30fps. Kala ko pwede man lang 720-60, pero... Yeah, hanggang 30fps lang talaga. Tapos, pagdating naman sa front camera niya, yep, hanggang 30fps nga lang. Pero at least kaya hanggang uh, 1080. Actually, for the price, yeah, surprisingly good yung speaker nito. Although, yeah, single bottom firing speaker lang. But it's actually quite good. Plus, combined with that 5,000 mAh battery and sa sobrang low-powered na chipset nito, although medyo inefficient na din, I would expect na siguro 6 hours of screen on time with about 50% left sa uh, medium to heavy use ko. Plus, with 18 watts na fast charging, assume ko yung 1% to 100 nito is about 1 hour 30 minutes siguro. And yeah, so far, masabi ko sa phone na to for the price, especially for this 6GB, 128GB variant, is well worth siya. Siguro pwedeng maging first smartphone ng anak mo, ganon. Pwedeng pantregal sa pamangkin mo. Extra phone mo, ganon. Pero of course, higit sa lahat, kung naghanap ka lang ng napakasulit and uh, actually, decent performing na budget phone, highly recommended ko na to. I'm not sure how it compares to a Unisoc, for example, a Unisoc T616 na chipset sa mga Infinix phones, ganon. Base sa pag-search ko ng uh, comparison ng benchmarks ng T618 or kahit ng T616, uh, kumpara sa G85 is pretty similar lang sila. Although ito, kahit pa paano mas tiwala ka pa kasi mediatek to eh. Ngayon nga, yung full review ko na ito after one week. So abangan nyo ngayon 
if you aren't subscribed already of course uh, subscribe to the channel as always leaving a like is the easiest way to support the channel and of course uh, turn on notifications for all so you'll be updated on my latest videos if gusto nyong bilhin ka agad to kahit wala pa yung full review ko is of course you can go ahead and do that para sa akin sulit naman siya kahit na hindi pa ako nakagawa ng full review i mean 5499 msrp for a phone with 6 gigs of memory and 128 gigs of storage with a 90 hertz display capable pa naman kahit pa paano na chipset and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace Let's do it.